with a deal reached with Mexico. The focus now shifts to stalled trade talks with China. Joining me now is John Bussey. He's the associate editor for the Wall Street Journal and a Fox News attributor. Hey, John, but let's stick with Mexico okay. first, if we could, okay? Yes. Is the Mexico deal a win for President Trump? Well, it certainly uh, takes the temper out of the discussions he's been having with uh, Mexico. Uh, and it looks like he's getting uh, something out of it. Uh, the, the fact that the uh, people who are crossing the border in the United States are going to be repatriated to at least Mexico, if not their home country, uh, at least temporarily. I mean, the details of this, we're going to have to see how they play out. Yeah. They're not permanently in Mexico. Mexico can't handle that influx. Uh, there's going to be probably a problem along Mexico's northern border because a lot of these migrants are coming back into communities there, and the communities may not want them, you know, either. So a lot of the details haven't been worked out. Mexico is going to get an accelerated uh, package of investment, uh, meant in part to help Mexico and countries in Central America through the difficulties that they're in. Uh, investment that is meant to create job opportunities, but also to simply alleviate the pro some of the problems in the region. Uh, that will be accelerated, so Mexico gets something out of this as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you know, the, the president got Mexico to essentially militarize its southern border more substantially with these 6,000 troops meant to stem the tide of Central Americans coming into Mexico on their way to the United States. Yeah, and Mexico is going to get some help with some health care for those folks who are there flooding uh, into Mexico trying to get their way here, make their way here. But let's talk about China, um, John. Can such big footing or strong arming work with China or does the trade war with China call for more nuance? Yeah, you know, strong arming. Um, this uh, worked with Mexico. Uh, you could argue that it was strong arming on, uh, and that it's going to hurt relations with Mexico and Canada and other trading partners in the future who are always going to be looking over their shoulder to see whether the deal that they have is going to be abrogated by the United States because of some new problem that's arisen that the president might put tariffs uh, on to try to alleviate. On the other hand, uh, it kind of worked. So with Mexico, at least. So you look at China and the strong army there is being uh, supported by a lot of people, the business community in the United States, a lot of Democrats are supporting it because there, too, negotiation over the last 30 years just didn't work. Mnuchin is in uh, is in uh, a meeting now and uh, in Asia. He's there uh, as the foreign the, the finance ministers meeting of the Treasury secretary before the G20 at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, look, I'm not here to negotiate. Mm -hmm. The deal is on the table. You walked away from it. You started retracting agreements that you had already made to us. And unless you come back to the table under that deal, um, the tariffs are going to continue. Yeah. So More I, to come. I, I don't see a lot of movement there yet. All right. Uh, so Dan Glickman, he's the former agriculture secretary. He was on ANHQ this afternoon. Let's listen to him. What is a, still a problem is, is that threatening tariffs all the time, which particularly affect farmers and American agriculture, affect America's reliability as a supplier to the rest of the world. And coupled with the terrible weather that's out there and right. low prices, it makes things really problematic for most family farmers. So let's hope this is a good first step in this process. So, John, is there something, something to be said about the possibility of, uh, you know, the downside of weaponizing tariffs? There's a lot to be said about that. Uh, and Republicans, as well uh, as Democrats, have been saying it's not meant to be used in this way for what is essentially foreign policy related issues like immigration. It's not, not meant to be used uh, that way. Uh, and certainly America's farmers have taken it on the chin. I'm not sure that we have seen details even about this supposed Mexican pur purchase of large amounts of U.S. agricultural right. goods. We haven't seen details of that. So, yes. In fact, no uh, one's going on record on that. Yeah, that's correct. Information um, doled and, out and by the, the president. I, yeah. yeah, I think that the president's trying to say to the farmers, hey, I did something for you in Mexico. We haven't seen what he did for them in Mexico, if, 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 if anything, because they have been the ones that have been suffering uh, among the most uh, in U.S. industries. So, yeah, there's a problem with weaponizing tariffs. On the other hand, you look at the long negotiations with China and how they did not reach the type of accords that Democratic and Republican administrations wanted. Uh, and that now, at least, there's some pretty serious negotiations happening under the threat of tariffs. So you wonder, uh, should they be weaponized under certain circumstances? I think at least if they're weaponized in the trade realm, you can justify them a little bit easier than in 
foreign policy issues like immigration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so then we've got the G20 20 summit happening in uh, Osaka, Japan, June 28th, June 29th. Uh, President Xi and uh, tr President Trump, they're going to meet for the first time face to face since all this uh, uh, started kicking off at that summit. So do we expect positive results, John? And also, what, what might other world leaders there, you know, be looking at, you know, saying amongst themselves and observing? Yes, other world leaders are going to be saying two things. One is, please reach a settlement. Uh, there are already indications that global growth is slowing. Uh, this is complicating that and making it worse, the trade frictions between the United States and China. On the other hand, uh, there are a lot of allies who say the time has come for some type of action that's needed against China. And so we may not be uh, voicing our support of the United States quite as vociferously as the U.S. wishes, but we're behind them. Yeah, but that's what I was going to ask. I mean, there's their chance. There's President Trump over there face to face with President Xi saying, look, guy, get this together or else more tariffs to come. Why don't these other uh, world leaders who are sort of amongst themselves talking in the background, why don't they get in there and lock arms with the president and say, yeah, we, we stand by you on this? Because they may not like the exact tactics of the president. They may not like the president. They may not like his other policies. They may not fa like the fact that he's pulled out of the Paris Climate uh, Accord. They may have their own domestic politics to be concerned about. But the EU, our allies in general around the world, have felt the same pain that the United States has in dealing with China. Their theft of intellectual property, their incredible subsidization of their own industries, who then become global competitors against the United States and EU allies. So they're, they're, they're not going to not benefit from what the United States is doing with China. So I think that there's, there's some support there. The question is, what's going to happen mm -hmm. at the G20, if anything? Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship between Xi and Trump is brand new. Uh, we're probably going to hear more before the G20 about what might happen at the G20 from the Sherpas, the people who are trying to execute the deal, mm -hmm. then we will at the G20 itself. But so far, we haven't heard much at all. All right. Well, we'll be watching John Bussey of The Wall Street Journal, associate editor and Fox News contributor as well. Good to talk to you, John. Thank Pleasure. you.